Hi guys, today we're going to be taking a look at this really, really cool um, 19 mid 60s Bradford electric guitar. Now I've loosened the strings and already taken the screws out to make things go a little faster, but there's a flyover which I'll play right now, and you can notice it has acoustic strings on it. Very interesting. And what's also very cool, the knobs are super neat too, and they actually have something that looks similar to my studio logo. Pretty cool. So let's get right to it and try to take these strings off. And uh, I haven't done that yet, so let's see what that takes. And sorry for the uh, bad lighting on my face here, but most of what you're gonna see is through the overhead cam. So this little part, that's pretty cool that it's got this part to it. From what I've seen from these guitars, they uh, don't often have that little cover. That's usually missing. I've loosened the springs already, or the strings already. You can see that the uh, tremolo here, you can see exactly how that works. This little spring acts kind of like a Bigsby and rotates the whole section that holds the strings in. Very cool. I don't know how stable that is, but very cool. What I've learned about these guitars is that they were built in Japan by Gaia Tone. And they're pretty rare. But more than that, they're just interesting. Like, check out all the switches. And what's cool is they have the print. They have it mounted upside down so that when you're playing, you can see. So I've already loosened these, but all the switches seem to be intact. This one's a little loose. A little bit. Let's take a look at what's inside here. Wow. I don't know how well you can see that from up there. The overhead cam should show it. I'll get some close-up shots after our, our little exploratory surgery here. You can see the... Uh, little rotating knobs, how big they are. How they go all the way to the bottom of the cavity. There's actually a little bit more relief here in the bottom of the cavity where those go. I found this really interesting. This bridge is straight up an acoustic bridge with an adjustable saddle. And I am planning on rebuilding this guitar and I might get rid of this because if you have a tremolo over a piece of bone or plastic or whatever this is. Actually, that sounds like bone. Um, it can just create grooves in it and the tuning will never really return to center. So it's got these four single coil pickups. And we have two which have these square poles and two that have these adjustable round poles. Let's see if we can get in there. I hope I see one more screw. See if we can get in here and take a look in this pick guard. I did plug it in and it was totally uh, buzzy, like crazy buzzy. Like uh, like there's no ground at all, <laughs> which doesn't seem correct. Seems like it should be crazy grounded. Okay, well, I don't want to hurt this. Well, that bridge just comes off, apparently, like that. And then there's two screws that hold the bottom of it in. What a crazy, crazy bridge. Okay. Base of the bridge, top of the bridge with the saddle. Interesting way to do an electric guitar. Let's see what's in here. Okay. So here is the ground that goes to the bridge. Which I'm sure you can see in the overhead cam. Wow. These are some crazy pots. I'm going to go ahead and bring you in. Look at this. These pots are all just rusty. They rotate fine though, which is kind of interesting. So the ground from the bridge literally is the output ground or the input ground. It's a strange place to put resistor. 
That is such a way, a weird way to wire. But I'm very interested. I, I see there's little webbies <laughs> that go across things they probably shouldn't. All the switches are grounded straight through the middle. How cool is this? I want to get into these pickups too. Wow, that's this has got to be the original foam from the 60s. All right, so my camera's telling me it's dying, so I'm gonna take a break and come back in a minute. Okay, camera crisis averted here. So yeah, again, we were just talking about this ancient, ancient foam. I really want to get a look inside these pickups. So we'll probably do that. Here's something I want to bring to your attention. The frets. Classic, small, very cheap fret wire. But over the years, the board has, you know, squeezed itself down and expanded like wood does. And the frets, if you look, are all very much pulled back from the edge of the fretboard. So that's kind of interesting. There's a little bit of uh, missing stuff around. A little bit of missing wood or place that could be filled around that inlay. These inlays are kind of almost sticking out. So this needs a lot of work. Let's come down here. I'll tell you what, let's, let's move this whole thing down so you can see it better. Hold on one second. All right, so you can see it's got these vintage tuners here. A Bradford logo, which is nailed basically to the headstock. This bar goes all the way through the headstock onto the other side. I'll show you the back in just a second. Still got the steel reinforced neck little logo right there hard to see and for some reason the nut was lacquered over so that's all gone now but I'm definitely going to refret this thing because you got a guitar like this you got to restore it right so all right I'm gonna put this up here actually hold on one second so here's the back of the tuners just your standard ge single gear you know just your standard tuners no big deal Nothing special about the back of the guitar either. The finish has seen better days. That's to be expected. It's all worn out nitrocellulose. Pretty, pretty wild. Okay, so why do I have this guitar and what am I going to do with it? Well, I know some super cool people at Blues Angel Music, one of my favorite local music stores, and they had this in the bag, thought I'd be interested, and of course I was. They gave me a really, really good deal on it. And I want to make it into a player. You know, this guitar has got some history, and it should be made into a player. Now, what do I mean by that? I don't want just a 60s curiosity guitar. I want a guitar that is going to be playable comfortably, look nice, and have all these electronics work exactly as they should. Finding a schematic would be probably impossible, but I plan on doing the body in an emerald green because I saw two other versions of this guitar and one of them was kind of a green color, but I'm going to take it darker and go for like a metallic emerald kind of look. And I'm thinking about replacing this bridge. That may sound like sacrilege, but this isn't a vintage Fender or Univox we got here. This is an off-brand, and while they do fetch a little bit of money, they're not going to reach the old, uh, you know, high flyer money or anything like that. You know, in pristine condition, it's not really worth making sure the finish is nitrocellulose, making sure I use period correct capacitors. You know, it's not worth that. What it's worth is bringing back to life in a modern way, and that's what I plan on doing. So I think. The next time you see this guitar will be when I'm painting this body. And uh, at that point, maybe we can do a deeper examination of things like the neck pocket and finding any cracks in the, in the neck or headstock or fretboard, anything like that. We'll go through a deeper examination and we'll get to see how all the little parts work. I'm gonna start taking that apart. But this is a really, really interesting guitar. And I am stoked to have this project here and to get to work on it. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a like, 
share, subscribe, help me out. I'm trying to get back into the YouTube thing. So, uh, thanks for hanging, guys, and checking this out with me. And I think this is going to be a really fun and interesting project. I'll see you soon.